We are kicking off this Sportsmax Zone edition with football. The Merseyside derby has ended in heartbreak for Liverpool as the Reds fell to a 2-0 defeat at Goodison Park. Gerard Branthwaite and Dominic Calvert-Lewin scored in each half for Everton as the Toffees won their first derby game at home since 2010. This is how the result leaves the table. Arsenal on top on 77 points. They're ahead of Liverpool, 74 stop there for now. Manchester City with two games in hand. A further point behind on 73, four points off the lead. Aston Villa, Tottenham and Manchester United in fourth, fifth and sixth with 66, 60 and 53 points. Meanwhile, Tuesday was a good day for the red side of London as Arsenal dispatched Chelsea by five goals to nil. Their biggest ever margin of victory over the Blues. The Gunners head coach, Mikel Arteta, says a result like this can do great confidence or add great confidence within the squad. Yeah, great for us, obviously. Um, for the confidence, for the belief that, that we can do it, that we can come to these stages against big teams and we can perform and win games the way we've done it tonight. Uh, so enjoy it and then let's back to work tomorrow because we have a big one on Sunday and we're going to have to prepare really well to, to try to beat them. Meanwhile, the Chelsea boss, Mauricio Pochettino, felt let down by his team's performance. I feel disappointed. I feel uh, really bad. Uh, I don't feel. I don't feel great. Uh, I think the performance wasn't good. We didn't start the game in the way that we supposed to start. Um, I think we concede the goal so easy. We make the things easy for Arsenal and start the game, uh, losing the game, and it was really tough. Yeah, a deflated Pochettino there as uh, Chelsea were off the pace in that fixture on Tuesday. Now, former Trinidad and Tobago international Brent Sancho joins us to discuss the current state of the EPL. Brent, the Arsenal uh, team having four games left. Do you see them in the driver's seat for the title, given the fact that you have had severe reservations about their championship medal in the past? I see them in the front of the car. I don't see them in the driver's seat. Uh, they probably uh, in a passenger seat. Uh, but uh, it, look, it's still a, a title that uh, they can certainly go on to claim. Uh, we've seen a different side of Arsenal uh, this year in the sense of uh, they're there and they're about. Normally around this time is where they have their calamitous uh, fall from Greece. Uh, but you have to give them credit, Lance, especially coming off of the fact that uh, the disappointing result against Bayern Munich and, of course, uh, Aston Villa as well. That is around the time you start seeing things going very, very wrong for, for Arsenal. A gritty result against Wolves and we can and then followed up uh, by a five-star performance against Chelsea. Uh, does make them look uh, a little bit different than what we saw last season. But that being said, of course, uh, they're coming up against a, a team in Manchester City within the title race context uh, that have been there, done there and worn the T-shirt. And I'm very sure looking at this situation as a situation that they can continue on and go on and win the title. Manchester City, that is. Yeah, to Arsenal credits, which you have already started to um, put forward in your narrative, uh, we did assess in the run-up to the uh, final matches of the season that they had the tougher assignments. And I guess we had looked at Chelsea as, as one of those tough ones, and they passed it with flying colours. Yeah, they passed them in flying colours, but I think uh, it needed to have a caveat over it, Lance, because you never know what Chelsea side you're going to get. And certainly without uh, Cole Palmer, uh, it's a lot weaker Chelsea tie. But when you look at the result, yes, there's so much credit you can give to that uh, Arsenal team. I think uh, the fluidity that they played in Odegaard was the sparkling best again. Uh, Kai Havertz give it credit. That man there in the picture uh, in, of course, Rice and, 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 and Trossard, who looks like a hell of a deal. Uh, for Mikel Arteta, and just overall, uh, the type of performance uh, from uh, minute one all the way down to the, the minute in injury time, they just look like a team on a mission. Uh, and you have to give them credit, because, again, this is the team that I, I myself have criticised when it comes to this portion of the season, or this side of the season, but they look like a team well-intent in running Manchester City all the way down to the wire. 
Uh, and uh, as I said, Arteta deserves full credit. And give it full credit to what the, he approached things tactically. I think starting Thomas Partey in the middle of freeing up the, uh, Rice a bit uh, to join Odegaard uh, certainly helped in terms of uh, the way that they played. Yeah, I'm anxious to get onto that uh, Merseyside story, which just happened a couple of hours ago or within the last two hours, Brent. But just a little bit more on uh, this um, massive win by Arsenal yesterday, because you have in the past questioned their leadership that they lack leaders on the field. And while we had said in the past couple of months that they appear to uh, be better now than they were last year or the year before, are you seeing anything from the Arsenal team that would make you revisit your thought that they don't have leaders on the field? I've seen slight improvements, and that's a fact. That, you know, I was reminded before I come, come in, came into this segment that Arsenal is the fourth youngest team in the Premiership, and, and sometimes... We do overlook those sorts of situations. Of course, Mikel Arteta is a, quite a young manager. Uh, and, uh, you know, you tend to look over the, those sorts of situations. This has been a premiership that has been dominated by Manchester City and Liverpool uh, over the last 10 years or so. Uh, so you, you, have to, you have to really put things in stock and understand that, yes, Arsenal are showing signs and, and finally starting to come uh, and looking like a championship team. I still don't think they're there yet. Uh, if they go on to win the, the premiership, that would be great uh, for them. But I think in terms of the maturity of the squad, the question of whether or not they have the leadership, I still don't think that's there. But is it an improvement? Is it an upward trajectory? Is, is it something that is going in a positive? I would suggest yes. Yeah, and how important was that Arsenal win, especially because, Brent, when I looked at the fixtures for all the teams that are, of course, contending for that top spot, no longer Liverpool. Um, Arsenal has a very difficult trek ahead of them. They have Manchester United, they have Bournemouth. Uh, how important was this win and in the manner in which they went about doing it uh, based on the opponents they have to face? I, I think it was a huge win. I think it was a statement win. Uh, when you look at the, the victory on Saturday, they really had to grind things out uh, against Wolves over the weekend, sorry, against Wolves. Uh, and to, and that victory against Chelsea was a state. It's a it's a it's a win that you need in football to to put cheers and smiles and confidence throughout your players. I'm very sure in training today there were high fives and and, and loads and loads of teeth to be shown because that's the feeling you get with that sort of performance. It gives you the confidence going into it. But then the reality hits on the weekend because they come up against a very difficult Spurs in a North London derby in a game where I'm very sure. Every single Tottenham player would want to be the team that stops their journey towards the, the, the Premiership. So uh, that will come and they will deal with it. But I think for the rest of the week, it'll be a void camp. Because you have to remember, Mariah, this was a team, lost to Villa, lost to Bayern Munich, and the, uh, everything about them was written off. Now, all of a sudden, a couple of days later, we're talking about uh, Arsenal possibly winning the Premiership. Yeah, plain talk, Brent. Can Arsenal go on to win this year's EPL title? They have the capabilities. They do. Um, I, Of course, as I, I've said all along in this show, that I do have my question marks. And if I was to be put on a spot now, uh, I would certainly go with Manchester City. Uh, but it doesn't take anything away from the fact that they're in there. They're there and amongst it. It is a two-horse race. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and Arsenal has a, a right uh, to be spoken about as potential winners. Uh, albeit, as I said, uh, Manchester City may be the favourites. But I think Arsenal is, is not a distant second by any stretch of the imagination. This is very, very tight. Yeah, well, let's go now to the fresh news, Brent, because the Liverpool loss today to Everton was a huge setback for them. Um, granted, you know, I, I hate these knee-jerk reactions because uh, a lot of people now are looking at Arsenal, but then Arsenal could stumble, as Liverpool did today, between now and the end of the season. And we are back to this, this, this close race once again. But we have said all the time, Brent, that derbies can be um, completely different from what the form book suggests. And the Merseyside derby over the years has been a reflection of that as well. But certainly, uh, Everton, I think only three wins in their last 17 matches going into this, were not expected to beat Liverpool today, and they did. Yeah, they won't. And, and you're, you're very correct. In fact, I, I would be very shocked if uh, they had the odds in any book for any bookmakers because... It was a long stretch. And, and if you think of, of how long Liverpool have dominated this derby, uh, you would have th thought it would have been a no-brainer. Uh, but give Everton a lot of credit. I thought they were extremely resolute, defensively well-organized. Uh, and you, you have to think that uh, it was a result that probably keeps them or gives them 
uh, another season in the Premiership. So they had something to play for. And uh, as Everton fans were singing, the fact that they could stop their rivals uh, at their home from winning, uh, of course, the Premiership as well is something that uh, had them buzzing around as well. But it's a big, big result. But you have to say, though, Lance, this is something that we, we may have suspected was coming. Liverpool has not been good over the last four or five games. Uh, and uh, to get, for as all as I'm giving credit to Everton, you often have to suggest that this Liverpool team has, has certainly hit a rut at the wrong time of the season. Yeah, and what's going wrong for them, um, specifically? I, I think the word is reliable. They, they will, the, the reliability of their strikers, and, and I, I use that in the sense of the likes of Nunes and Diaz, and, and certainly Mohamed, uh, Mohamed Salah, they were the ones that put the ball into the back of the net. Half chances, no chances. They just did, they're just not doing that anymore. And I think that is a problem. That is where things are not going right for them. Because you all know goals in important situations are the ones that put you uh, in the driver's seat. That has not happened for them. They've missed not only guilty chances or, or clear chances, even the ones that they, they create. They just it's just not happening for them offensively. And if you if you ask me this, Lance, maybe six to eight months ago, I would have told you that could never happen to this Liverpool team. But it certainly is. And they, somehow, in some reason, uh, they're just not finding the back of the net the way that they normally used to. Yeah, you just mentioned earlier on about um, Tottenham's energy going into an Arsenal game. And uh, it puts me into the mind frame that um, Tottenham could do to Arsenal what Everton has done to Liverpool here, because it's the same kind of situation, the, the derby clashes. And, and you have to sprinkle that this is a very good Tottenham team. This is not a Tottenham team uh, that we've seen over the last five to eight years. This is a Tottenham team that has done well this season. This is a Tottenham team that has a, a, a genuine amount of quality that can beat an Arsenal team. Uh, and it is a fixture that probably could define how Arsenal's season continues on, because it's a massive game. Uh, and as I said... For Spurs looking into this, they would have looked at the fact that Everton beat Liverpool and they would look at the fact that they know if they were to beat Arsenal, this could put all of the marbles into the Manchester City coffers uh, as it relates to winning the, the, the league. And as a player coming into those sorts of fixtures, coming into a derby game, you always talk about how big it is. But having that extraness in it, having that extra spice in it for a player on the other side, You'll be, you'll be chomping at the bits to be out there on, on, the, on the weekend. And, of course, Tottenham have um, UCL hopes as well to, to, to beef up their, their, their energy. Um, Man City have Brighton coming up on Thursday, an opportunity for them to get right back into, into the frame, which we know they still are because they, they, they do have two games in hand. Yeah, they certainly do. And I'm very sure they would have preferred the points than the games in hand. But nevertheless, they have to win the football games. But coming out of the Champions League, I'm very sure the conversation with Pep Guardiola and his players is all about now trying to, to make sure that they finish strongly. Uh, we all know that what Pep has done throughout the season and making this team uh, serial winners. Uh, and they would be looking at this fixture as uh, the fixture to start uh, putting the markers back down and setting and sending the messages to the to the, the teams that are chasing them. It's a perfect fixture for them. Brighton is a team, as we all know, play uh, open style football, front foot football. Uh, they're a possession-based team. They're a team that like to press high up the park. So it's going to be a game that's carved out uh, for Manchester City if they are rampant to do very, very well. But uh, again, another fixture where you really can't overlook Brighton because, again, a team that has done very well this season. They've had their ups and downs. They've been very bad when they're bad and they've been very good when they're good. Yeah, and, and the fact is that while the two big English teams or the two of them that were in the UCL that are, are now knocked out have no more Champions League uh, to, to, you know, in, increase their appetite for football at the moment, it just focuses that, that, that uh, attention now on the title race, which is the best we've seen in a long time. <laughs> well, in preparation is different because now you're talking about less games in the fixture list, you're talking about as it as training comes along, the competition for spots gets a little bit different because some players understand that they may not get the same minutes uh, in the Premiership as they may get in the Champions League. So now it comes down to these sorts of fixtures are left, and the training would be have a little bit more fizz and buzz about it because now uh, people are genuinely competing for spots because this is the competition and this is what they have. Of course, they're still in the FA Cup as well, uh, but for Manchester City uh, and Arsenal, for that matter. This is all they focus on. That is what the conversation would be solely and wholly uh, in the locker room. 
Uh, and, and because of that now, the focus has been driven. It has been narrowed. Uh, the coaching staff fully understands what they have to do. It's familiar fools as it relates to the premiership. Uh, and more importantly, they all know what they need to do to win the league. Manchester City know they just need to keep winning. Arsenal knows that they keep the pressure up. Uh, they can go on and, and maybe topple Manchester City. But for Arsenal, uh, Lance, it really comes down to the game this weekend uh, against Spurs. They know it's a local game. They know it's a difficult fixture. What kind of character this young Arsenal team will have going into this game when the pressure is on? I think that's that's the, the multi-million dollar question. Yeah, and, and, to, and to leave the discussion before we wrap the segment, uh, Pochettino's uh, job on the line now, you think, at Chelsea? I, I think so. I, I think as much as we talk project, as much as we talk, uh, you know, this is a, a, a growing, that they're bringing in new players and, and young players. It's just been too poor, uh, Lance. It's, 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 there's been too many very, very poor performances. Uh, and I just feel that uh, there, there will be people thinking somewhere. And I, and I also add to the fact that the ownership group, uh, for me, uh, just is just not my cup of tea. Uh, and they will make volatile decisions like the one they possibly may, may make with Pochettino. It's yeah. unfortunate, uh, but that's the business of the sport. Yeah, OK, Brent, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for talking to us. And uh, we'll close to watch what happens with the Brighton Man City game tomorrow. And we hope it doesn't leave Mariah Ramharat crying. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Back with more on the Sports Night Zone after this. <laughs>